Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tom's Gadget Garage. Today we are here with the 10 Ways Seago 600 Pro, which is a sleek and minimalist electric bike designed to minimize maintenance, maximize ride time, while also ensuring a smooth and natural feeling ride. What we're going to do today is we're going to take a closer look at some of the features on this bike, then we're going to take it out on a first impressions ride to see what the Seago 600 Pro is all about. Then we're going to follow up this video with a hill climb test, with a range test, then we'll bring it all together in a full comprehensive end-to-end -end review. So without further delay, let's jump into the details. The Seago 600 Pro is a class one e-bike, so top speed here is 20 miles an hour, and there is no throttle to be had here, and 10 ways does claim upwards of 53 miles of theoretical range. Now, one of the first things that I think about when it comes to bike maintenance are chains, derailers, and lubrication. And the beautiful thing about the 10-way Seago 600 Pro is that it comes equipped with a Gates carbon belt drive system, so there are no chains to be had on this bike. And according to 10-ways, this carbon reinforced belt should be good for over 18,000 miles. Now, one thing to call out about this bike is that it is a single speed bike and this main chain ring or belt ring has 60 teeth and the rear sprocket has 22 teeth. Now, given that this is a single speed bike, it is going to be more appropriate for flat ground riding. But the nice thing is, is that it does give you three levels of pedal assist, which is going to be huge in terms of helping you get up any kind of incline. And of course, we're going to be putting that to the test. Speaking of pedal assist, we do have a 350 watt motor in the rear, which is capable of cranking out upwards of 45 newton meters of torque which is a lot of torque for a bike of this size and weight now 10 ways does claim that this bike weighs 37 pounds without any accessories of course for our full review we will be putting this thing on the scale to get an exact weight now powering that motor is a 36 volt 10 amp hour battery with approximately 360 watt hours of capacity and 10 ways does use lg cells in the construction of this battery pack and of course this pack is removable there's actually a key Key slot on the other side so you can unlock that and take the battery with you charge it separately from the bike whatever you want to do and of course this is the key slot that i was telling you about earlier so if you want to remove the battery simply insert the key turn it and this battery pops right out and then of course right here i don't know how well you're going to see it uh, but there is a button to take a look at the uh, status charge status of your battery so in terms of tires this bike is equipped with 700 by 45 c cst expedium pro tires with puncture resistance so we'll definitely be putting these to the test on our first impressions ride on the tires we do have your typical schrader valves in terms of stopping power this bike is equipped with tectro hydraulic disc brakes and we've got 160 millimeter rotors in the rear and the front both in the front as well as in the rear we have metal fenders to help keep the dirt rocks and water off of you as you're riding here we have some pretty typical plastic pedals and these are not quick release so if you want to remove those you'll have to go ahead and get a wrench out now if you're going to be riding around at night this bike does have a frame integrated headlight which is in a fixed position and it looks like it's got two bulbs so we'll definitely be putting that to the test and at the rear of the bike we also have a tail light unfortunately it's not integrated into the frame of the bike like the headlight it is battery operated and so it would have been nice to see something integrated like the headlight but uh, anyways it's something there to help with visibility at night here we've got a sleek looking road bike style saddle which we'll absolutely be putting to the test on our range test doesn't look like the most comfortable thing in the world but we're definitely going to find out we also have a quick release for our seat post adjustable handlebars as well as a quick release for our front wheel and of course back here we do have a pretty robust looking kickstand which is at the back of the bike so out of the way of the pedals which is always nice now moving on over to the cockpit here we do have these locking grips which is really nice to see uh, we've also got our tectro hydraulic brake levers here as well as a bell on the right hand side and it sounds like this we've got our front reflector here and then as we work our way over you'll see we've got our lcd screen here i'm not sure how well you can see that uh, but that powers on you can put in a password and then of course it's going to have all the important ride information including battery percentage speed uh, odometer trip you know time elapsed uh, as well as battery voltage and all that fun stuff so all the information you need in a very sleek and compact display in terms of the function of this display you do have a power button up top a mode button up front as well as an up and down arrow which you can use to toggle between these settings on the bike as well as toggle between your levels of pedal assist of which there are three on this bike 
So the higher level of pedal assist means the motor is gonna be doing more work. Now this is an app enabled bike, so you can download the 10 Ways app and that'll give you a really nice driver dashboard with integrated navigation functions. It'll give you all the details on your ride, your odometer, the whole nine yards. So if you're into that kind of thing, you can absolutely use that. Now, one thing I do wanna point out about the 10 Ways Seago 600 Pro is that it's got a very streamlined design. If we take a closer look here, uh, you don't see any welds here at the front of the bike. It's very clean. It's constructed of this 6061 uh, aluminum. Uh, and if we work our way back, you don't see really any welds at all whatsoever. Uh, the only welds that you actually see here are gonna be uh, by the crank as well as the rear end of the bike. This Seago 600 Pro is a torque sensor e-bike. So for those of you looking for a more natural riding experience, this is gonna be it. Of course, we're gonna be putting that torque sensor to the test to see if we have any delay, to see how well it kicks in. Uh, but with torque sensors, it's a pressure-based system. So the more you put into it, the more pressure you put on the pedal, the more power the bike is going to deliver as opposed to a cadence sensor which basically looks at your cadence or how fast you're pedaling. So now that we've gone over all the features of this bike let's go ahead and get this thing charged up and take it on our first impressions ride. All right folks so we are out here with the Tenway Seago 600 Pro on our first impressions ride and one of the biggest things that I'm looking to get out of this is what is it really like to ride a single speed electric bike. I'll be honest with you, when I heard that this bike was a single speed, I thought, huh, that sounds pretty limiting, but we'll definitely be putting that to the test today. So right now I have pedal assist 100% off. So we're in level zero right now. So I'm doing 100% of the work and we're just cruising around at about 13 miles an hour. So that's one thing that I really like about this bike is that if you run out of juice, no problem at all, you can pedal it like a normal bike. And right now, maintaining this speed of 13 miles an hour is not difficult at all. Now when I bump it up into pedal assist level one, the motor kicks in and right now is doing some of the work. And with the torque sensors, the harder I pedal, the more power that the motor delivers to the bike. And that's one of the really nice things about torque sensor bikes is that they're more fitness oriented. They give you a much more natural riding feel whereas the cadence sensor depending on the bike sometimes it's like an on and off switch with the power now when i bump us up into pedal assist level two takes us to the next level of motor assistance and once again i'm pedaling nice and relaxed cruising around at about 14 15 miles an hour except now i'm doing less work and if i start pedaling harder you can definitely feel that motor kick in. So right now, without much effort, I'm cruising around at about 18 miles an hour. All right, so we're gonna ride off the beaten path here, head onto the bike trail. You know, now let's say, for example, I bump into pedal assist level three. There's definitely a higher level of assistance now. And if I start pedaling, a little faster, a little harder, I'm able to get up to 19, 20 miles an hour without hesitation. So in a moment, we'll use the Draggy GPS performance monitor to see how fast it takes us to get to top speed. And then we'll also get, you know, some verification on the top speed of this bike. Now, right now we're cruising around and pedal assist level two. And uh, you know, I'm riding this like I would a normal bicycle. That's, that's what it feels like right now. Uh, the difference is I'm just going a little bit faster for the same amount of effort that I would on a non-powered bike. And so right now, just cruising along pedal assist level two, we're going 16 miles an hour. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this bike doesn't have a suspension. So like I mentioned before, it is a minimalist bike. It's a city commuter. It's designed to be as light as possible. You know, Tenway says as little as 37 pounds. Uh, and so with something like this, you're just cruising around. And right now, looking at these uh, gaps between the pavement, I can feel them, but it's definitely not uncomfortable. All right, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is take out the draggy performance monitor, and we're gonna see what acceleration looks like. Now keep in mind, you know, with my level of fitness, it might be different than your level of fitness. So acceleration is going to be a little bit different for everybody. I don't have a throttle on this bike. It is a class one e-bike, uh, but uh, we're going to give it our all. I'm going to go ahead and put this in pedal assist 
level three. And we're gonna go ahead and measure acceleration and top speed. We're gonna go ahead and start in three, two, one, go. All right, you can definitely feel that power kick in. Giving it our all. And looks like we've already hit 20 miles an hour. And I'm still paddling. All right. Let's see how we did on that speed run. All right, zero to 15, 4.26 seconds. Zero to 26.85 seconds. Zero to 23 miles an hour, 11.98 seconds. All right, we're gonna go ahead and try that again. In three, two, one, go. All right. The power is almost immediate on this bike. It's got a very responsive torque sensor. Here we go. All right. Let's go ahead and see how we did on that one. All right, on that one, zero to 15, 4.97 seconds. Zero to 20, 7.74 seconds. Zero to 22, 10.27 seconds. Not too shabby, so you can definitely pedal this bike on flat ground faster than the 20 mile an hour top speed. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is a brake test. So I'll get us up to about 15, 20 miles an hour. We're gonna hit the brakes now. Oh yeah, definitely a solid braking performance. So this bike does have those Tektro hydraulic brakes with 160 millimeter rotors, both up front and back. And it looks like that provides us plenty of stopping power. We're gonna go ahead and do that brake test one more time. All right, putting us in pedal assist level three so we get a nice solid takeoff. And here we go, brake test number two. Oh yeah, solid stopping power. So far we know that this bike can get up to speed very quickly, especially in pedal assist level three, which is the maximum pedal assist level. We know it's got solid brakes. It's got a very natural ride feel. I'm cruising around pedal assist level two, 15 miles an hour, uh, and really literally feels like riding a regular non-powered bike, with the exception that if I pedal harder, I'm gonna be getting some assistance. And so we'll definitely see how this feels on our range test, which we'll do in a future video. But next, what we're gonna do, is we're gonna to go to the local dog park here because they have a little bit of an incline that we can test this going uphill. And that's one of the things that I'm most interested in. So as I mentioned before, one of the things that uh, I was a little hesitant on was the fact that this is a single speed bike. So not having gears to choose from can be limiting, especially when going uphill. Now they do build this as really a flatland bike, uh, but you do have three levels of pedal assist. So when the going gets tough, you can always bump up pedal assist level, uh, and that'll give you some assistance to go up those inclines. So like I said, we'll have a, a moderate incline here. I think it's about five, five and a half percent or so, uh, but uh, that'll give us an idea of what some uh, light hill climbing looks like on this 10 ways Seago 600 Pro. Now we will be doing a proper hill climb test in a future video. There's actually a neighborhood just north of me uh, that's got uh, uh, some solid hills that we can test this out on. Normally I'd go to South Mountain Regional Park for my hill climb tests, but uh, that's a little extreme. Uh, it's a lot steeper, goes a lot further, and on my other electric bikes, I definitely had to leverage uh, the gearing to make it to the top. Just gotta watch out for the dogs here. They're all excited. Come out to the dog park. But so far, I will say that this is a very smooth riding bike. Uh, very good handling. You know, it's got those bigger, you know, 700 by 45C tires. And that definitely helps with stability. A lot of the other e-bikes I test out have the 20-inch, you know, fat tires, which are fun as well. 
but this just feels like a much more natural riding experience than those bikes. And I think it all has to do with this torque sensor, which by the way, is very smooth. Probably the smoothest torque sensor I've tested on a bike. All right, looks like we got dogs running off the ramp, jumping into the water today. dogs excited here so here is our incline uh, we are in let's do it. let's start with pedal assist zero no pedal assist all right we're making it up uh, but I definitely have to put some work in pedal assist one we're getting a little bit of power there we go kicks in this is a lot more comfortable pedal assist two a lot more power becomes a lot easier and of course Pedal assist three, we rock it right up. So on a little incline like that, pedal assist is definitely needed. So it's nice to have three levels to choose from. All right, got a little bit of a pedestrian bridge here over the freeway, it's a little noisy. All right. So for me, I would say that pedal assist level one and levels two are gonna be the most appropriate for everyday riding, at least for me. Uh, pedal assist two, I think, gives you the best of both worlds. You know, you're putting in a little bit of work, but so is the bike, and so you can get going a lot quicker. I think I'd only use pedal assist level three for when I'm going up, you know, a steeper incline. I don't see myself using that for everyday riding. All right, let's go ahead and test out the responsiveness of this torque sensor. So we're gonna go ahead and stop. I am in pedal assist level two. We're gonna go ahead and start pedaling in three, two, one, go. Oh yeah, that's immediate. That is immediate. So that torque sensor senses the pressure on the pedals and almost immediately delivers power, which is very refreshing because you know a lot of cadence sensor e-bikes it takes some time for that motor to kick in. Sometimes upwards of one, two, three seconds. Now, some Cadence Sensor e-bikes do give you the ability to dial in the pedal assist sensitivity so that the motor kicks in with fewer revolutions of the pedals. But with these torque sensors, like I mentioned before, it is a much more natural riding experience. And so you get the power as soon as you start pedaling. And uh, if you watched some of my previous content, I did cover the Velatric T1 ST. I actually purchased that bike with my own money. And that is an also another phenomenal bike. Uh, but what I am noticing is that the torque sensor is slightly more responsive on this bike. Uh, and it's, it's smoother in terms of its delivery. So on the T1 ST, I thought that was the smoothest bike in the world. But after riding this, you know, as soon as you start pedaling, you know, it, that motor kicks in and it kicks in gradually and immediately. And I don't know if that makes sense what I just said, but you don't get that like kick of power. It's just naturally comes as you pedal. Uh, so really impressed so far uh, with the torque sensor on this bike. So on these e-bikes, one thing that's always a concern is the possibility for ghost pedaling, which is essentially a scenario where you're pedaling faster than the bike will go. So right now I am in pedal assist three at 18 miles an hour. There's no uh, ghost pedaling at all. But as soon as I get to 19, 20 miles an hour, you do get a little bit of ghost pedaling. So keep that in mind. So if you're gonna be riding around in pedal assist three near the top speeds, you know, at the very high end, you may be pedaling faster, you know, than the bike will go. So. Ghost pedaling something that we see pretty much on all e-bikes, uh, you know, and when that kicks in is dependent on the bike and it's, you know, specific gearing. But honestly, for being a single speed bike, 
that is very respectable. No ghost pedaling until 19, 20 miles an hour. That's pretty impressive. All right, so as far as first impressions go, what are my thoughts on the 10 Ways Seago 600 Pro? Number one, the torque sensor is probably one of the best that I've tested to date. It kicks in immediately and gradually, so it's very smooth operation when you're accelerating out. Number two, it gets up to speed really quickly. Uh, and so if you're in pedal assist three and you put some work in, you're gonna get, you know, above top speeds. So 22, 23 miles an hour in about 11 seconds. So that's really quick. Number three is gonna be how natural the ride feels. You know, cruising around on this, sometimes it's easy to forget that you're even riding an e-bike. And so, you know, if you wanna ride this around with no pedal assist, like I'm doing right now, you can absolutely do that. But, you know, if you want a little bit of assistance, you can dial it into pedal assist one, two or three, depending on how much power you want. And if you do need to put in some extra effort to get up a hill, all you have to do is pedal a little bit harder and you're gonna get more power out of that motor. This bike itself has an IPX4 rating for water resistance and the electronic components have an IP65 water and dust resistance rating. And uh, in their Q&A FAQ section, they do literally state to go ahead and ride the bike in rainy conditions. Just be sure not to leave it under pouring rain for extended periods of time. So if you're gonna be biking into the office or something, you don't wanna leave it outside in a downpour. But uh, it's pretty awesome to see them mentioning, you know, go ahead and ride it in the rain. I don't see a lot of e-bike and electric scooter companies encouraging people to do that. So one thing I do want to mention is that 10 Ways did provide me with this bike for review purposes. So we're absolutely going to be putting this bike through the ringer in terms of testing. So today was our first ride impressions. Next up will be our range test, our hill climb test. We'll rack up uh, several hundred miles on the bike and then we'll bring it all together in a comprehensive end-to-end -end review. Now, if you are interested in purchasing this bike, uh, I will include some links in the description below and if you use those to purchase it, it absolutely helps support this channel and it keeps the wheels moving on future reviews. And let me know in the comments section below if you have any thoughts, questions, comments, concerns. Happy to address those. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into Tom's Gadget Garage. We'll see you next time.